This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 686 Tuesdays. We've been talking about uh, professionalized wrestling. We are back in the studio. I am Sorgatron. We're at Sorgatron Media Studios here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, and back in the studio. We we went on a jaunt. We, 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 we went on a, a walkabout last week. And we are back. And we have an internet connection. And Mad Mike is joining us from Beacon, New York. He's the only Mayhemer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. Sorg, I was so lonely here last week. You were. Did you show up? Yeah. Sorg, I I sat in front of my computer for over two hours two on two hours. A... Oh no! Just repeatedly clicking the Google Hangout window to see what's going on. Trying to call. Okay. And I, Sorg, it was. It made me. It made me feel like I was watching Impact again. Mm. And That's you, how lonely and you did, I felt. And you didn't find access yet. I no, I I don't have access. What is this? Even, even if I had access, I wouldn't use access. I was literally trying to find access on the um, cable subscription. I do have access to, hmm. uh, yet I can find all the shows, but I can't find an actual channel. It's very strange. Like on demand, I can find like the women wrestling and everything, but I can't find the actual channel on on the system. It's curious. Anyways, hey, let's talk about wrestling. We talked about everything else before the show with us is the uh, the man with the fanciest fanny pack in professional wrestling. Is Xander Gabriel with us right now. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Your, your second time here. You've been here with Indie Mayhem Show. If you want to check that out. Uh, also, if uh, uh, you guys have uh, the Patreon Pocky Club level, you are probably familiar with the blindfold match that uh, comedian Jay Cooper and Ronnie Starks watched several weeks ago. And uh, we, I'm, I'm sad Ronnie is on assignment. Uh, I, I really wish he was here to uh, kind of talk with you about that a little bit more during this show. But it's good to have you on, sir. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Excellent. Glad to be back. If you're on audio, also, um, there's some <coughs> Gucci Marks going on in the show <laughs> that hope you'll see on our social media. But anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can find links and subscribe to uh, us in podcast and video form. Look us up on your favorite platform. You can also uh, ask your Google Home, Amazon Echo, uh, Apple HomePod uh, to listen to the Wrestling Mayhem Show podcast, whether that be on just the podcast app in general or on TuneIn, whatever you need to connect for that. Also, you can hit us up at that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or even it'll work. Uh, I love Mad Mike's singing voice at WrestlingMayhemShow.com if you so choose. Also, you can hit us up at the, the uh, voicemail, 412-206-WMS0. Feel free to put that in your phone under uh, dial while I'm drunk to go home. Uh, also, tweet us at Mayhem Show, Facebook page, Wrestling Mayhem Show, and a great Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group with a lot of great conversation going on there, including some stories that we pulled for tonight's show. And you can join us every Tuesday night, unless we uh, decide to go to Pit Fight uh, and do a live spot, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook Live and also on several other platforms but of course if you want to be part of that conversation we're keeping an eye on you guys right now on the facebook live just like matt carlin's our friend of the mainstream media alex cars out in la dave potter of the tiny shutter podcast brandon in the kc and everybody else hopping in and also alex number two <laughs> also in la area uh that i know was at that was it raw in bakersfield um uh, last week so i know we were getting some live tweets and reports from that when that was happening too also, uh, if you catch us later on one of the other outlets uh, and have some comments or just want to tell uh, Mad Mike what he's gotten wrong this week, uh, you can tweet us at Mayhem Show, hashtag WMS686, and uh, also patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show thank you so much so many of you guys are supporting us we're actually paying off our podcast bills uh for this show it's like this is like a monumentous monumentous occasion 
And I think we have like a some kind of pizza party or something when we get to a hundred a <laughs> hundred uh, uh, dollars on there. And we're like fast approaching that, Mad Mike. Does, does that mean I'm gonna start getting paid? <laughs> Well, you know, as far as <laughs> podcasting goes, you know. Damn it. We'll pay you. Oh, well. Well, maybe eventually we'll be able to pay you it's in. Uh, okay, Dixie. Squ- what? Dixie? <laughs> well, eventually we'll be able to pay you in Squarespace and uh, Casper mattresses as any other good podcast, right? <laughs> hey, you know, uh, website and a handshake, pal. Website and a handshake. Oh, that, I like that. I, I'm going to make that. I want to try to make that a thing in, in, amongst podcasters that have absolutely no idea about wrestling. Okay. Uh, so, but thank you to the people that Pretty do. Much a handshake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Casper mattress and a handshake. Uh, thank you to our friends at the fan of the show, one dollar level. Bo Diggity. Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, Team Hammerfist, at the Poppy Poppy Club. Yes. Can we change that sword? Uh, uh, not listen, listen everybody in the po- about poppy for weeks. Every, dude, when I went to Thailand with Chet's Flexor, all I did was grab different flavors of to- poppy. Poppy? Pocky. So. <laughs> you might be having different discussions if you grab different flavors of poppy. I'm going to drink some more of this so I can get my brain back. Anyways, at the Pocky Club, and if you're at... at if you're a Patreoner and you think that we should change it to Poppy Club, please message us on there or at Good Times or Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com or Poppy Club at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Patreons don't let me down. Our friends Hale Bradley, Doc Remedy, Dave Potter, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery at the Pizza Club ten dollar level at thirteen is Ryan Clark and our manager, our friend tonight helping us with the Sorgatron Media Draft is OccupyProWrestling.com. Alex out there. You guys support the show too at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. As we said, it is draft week, as you can tell. Yeah, my windows are open. It's a little chilly. It is a little chilly. I just took the AC unit out of the out of the window today. Uh yeah, because it's 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 fall, it's the northeast. Sorg, it's, I also um continuously watched a movie that has uh Kevin Costner, Tom Welling, and uh Diggle from Arrow in it called Draft Day. Jeez, really? Wow. I, just, I just continually watched it because wow. uh, it was it was a draft day. That's what you do on draft day. Okay. Um, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. <laughs> Tina, says, Tina says, wow, that's known in the red light district mattress and a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> and we just ventured into another. Uh, we might get really confused. Back to Pornhub. Back to Pornhub. Exactly. Anyway, so there is some wrestling news from the week. <laughs> Who knew? It seems like everything's happening, man. Um, so first of all, I do want to mention. Okay, it's a Wednesday night war. How are things going? What, 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 when we've been talking about, I think, I think, uh, hands down, NXT has been the better show, but AEW has been the better watch show. Uh, seems to be the. Um, I don't want to install an app for this article. What the heck? Wrestling. <laughs> listen, wrestling. What news websites are the worst? because <laughs> yeah they have the worst ads they have the worst just everything they they blow up my phone you know and it's it's just it's horrible anyways according to pro wrestling torch because that's a fountain of uh, good information uh aew dynamite drew uh it, it's it's hitting over a million uh viewers while nxt is uh 70 70 790,000. those numbers were uh 1.4 million and 80, 845,000 respectively their premiere week and that'll be the first week that NXT was two hours uh, head to head with uh, AEW so AEW handily winning this uh, quote unquote ratings war I don't think I'd worry about it too much I think everybody's going to make their money off of this but AEW also lost a lot more people than NXT did um percentage wise no people yeah, number of people, but I think that is AEW was down ten percent, uh, and they lost like three hundred thousand people. Right, but uh, but but I mean percentage wise though, they they didn't lose. They're about on track, and this is typical though. This is typical. You don't know. You don't see too many shows that don't drop significantly after premiere week. No, I know, but I I don't like as someone who watches both shows. Mm-hmm. 
AEW has not given me a reason to make them the show I watch first. Okay. Okay. They haven't because I it just like and I know the wrestlers too. Like I'm looking at it from a person who doesn't know anything about these people. Mm-hmm. You like there's no introductions to anybody on that show. Mm-hmm. Like y- you're right. There are there are no introductory packages. There's no other than like commentary kind of explaining. Like, it's assuming everyone has watched every episode of Being the Elite and all the pay per views. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, which has worked? Which has worked for them so far going into the pay per views? I don't know about that. They lost three hundred thousand people. Mm-hmm. They lo- like NXT only lost maybe eighty thousand, maybe a hundred thousand, something like that. That's because NXT is running packages. They're telling you who these people are, and they have commentary teams that are really, you know, driving home the actual stories. Mm -hmm. Whereas MJF showed up last week. He's not been on the show yet. Like, like, he was on the first episode, but you don't know anything about him. Um, Xander, have you been uh, catching these programs? I mean, it seems like everybody's kind of at least checking into what's going on with this Wednesday night war. I am completely up to date, mm-hmm. and I agree that I thought AEW is kind of like Mike said, it's not giving me a huge reason mm-hmm. to come back. Um, I also noticed that NXT, you can watch that the next day on the network, yeah, or you yeah. can watch it on Hulu. So for them to lose. And Mike said it best, only 80,000 subscribers, considering the fact that people can still watch it on Hulu or the network the next day. I think that's a pretty good sign that they're it, not losing a lot of people. The people who have the ability to watch it on the network are still coming back and watching it on TV. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's like they have their core <laughs> audience already while AEW is still kind of formulating that to a point. Yeah. So, seems I, fair. It's rough to compare the shows because mm. AEW has just been, and I, they, they haven't introduced anybody. The only time I remember is the very first match between Cody and Sammy Guevara. They had like a 10 minute introduction to both of them. I thought this mm-hmm. is really cool. I want to see these guys fight now. And it, it's dropped down. And again, they're, 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 they're doing it online. So like they had Jericho do a promo where he had a, two, like a 30 second blurb on everyone, which mm-hmm. yeah, was a good promo, but it was also in the middle of your second episode. Mm-hmm. Like, you need someone to introduce everyone that's on screen. You Or you need the characters to do it themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, you don't know who any of the women are. You don't know why B. Priestley and Britt Baker hate each other. Mm-hmm. Like, the commentary should inform this or they should have video packages because of this stuff. Like, especially since we do have uh, three previous pay-per-views or live events, I guess we can just say, because some of them are uh, freebies for, for many of us here in the States on uh, bleacher report live. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like they're lacking of footage to do that or even just incorporating being the elite footage that they're doing. Like they're already making the stuff. Yeah, yeah, they have the content, but it's and like there's, and there's so many people that have not been featured on the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like MGF just kind of pops up and you you don't get that. And again, again, I've watched some enough of being the elite to know what the story is there. But um, but WWE does this to a point, too, where sometimes people pop up and they talk about like I was thrown last week when they said Bailey's been having a lot of problems and not coping well with her her loss on Sunday of the belt and everything. And I guess I guess there's Vinya somewhere on YouTube or something where she was just like losing it, right? No, no yeah. on, right after right after she lost the match to Charlotte, they zoomed in on her throwing a temper tantrum. She kicked the stairs and everything. Okay, which like I, that's, that's what they were talking about. And it was it was right there. On, like they didn't show it again. No, but. I mean, Bailey's also an established character who told you exactly that she was being frustrated by coming out with a new hairstyle mm-hmm. and murdering inflatable people. Yes. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, uh, the inflatable people. I believe one of them was named Mitch. Yes, Mitch the inflatable. Well, he's also a plant, too. <laughs> By the way, that was a very good impression <laughs> of, of an inflatable person that he's doing over there. <laughs> the googly eyes would help. But yeah. <laughs> they would. 
Uh, well, if the gimmick ever comes back, you can audition for <laughs> oh, it'll be back. a replacement. It'll be back at some point. One day when we have the four war- horsewomen like finally coming around. Um, yeah. So I, so we have that. I mean, AEW also, I, I, I've enjoyed, I think I talked about briefly last week, the AEW Dark Product, which I guess the second episode just went up. Although uh, Tony Schiavone on the green screen looks laughably awful. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. But, uh, you know, in his event center, full body green screen uh, situation over there. But um, like, I think we've produced better segments over here. But uh, but still, there, there's this is the B talent, at least, looking at that. You know, uh, uh, Mike, did you see any of the AEW Dark? I, I'm not boycotting it because it's another show on the internet, and I don't want to have to watch a show on the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, from what I've heard, it's just straight matches. Mm-hmm. There's no real storytelling or anything like that. There's no vignettes, but they could probably use a bear, mm-hmm. like. I, because it's been like I mean, Grant, it's only been two weeks. I understand. And, and Potter and Potter agrees they can probably use it better to kind of enhance everything yeah, else. Like I get it. It's only been two weeks. Mm-hmm. But as someone who has been extremely skeptical and wary of AEW as a whole, they're already kind of proving my point. Because they're saying wins and losses matter, right, mm-hmm. Sork? Right. The two people who had a match for the number one contender, only one of them has had a win mm-hmm. in AEW. Mm-hmm. And yes, I realize Pac pointed that out in commentary. Pac, whatever. Pac pointed that out in commentary. But that's my entire problem with it. Mm-hmm. You can't say wins and losses matter when you show me that they don't. We got an applause. <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree with that. I mean, I've been the wins and losses matter. I believe was trying to add some legitimacy, relating it to more sport like. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. They put I'm it on the. Yet, they put it on the intro graphics. I love yeah. that they have it too. The win loss yeah. record, but I don't yeah. feel like that's adding anything because doesn't mean anything because they're not showing like standings. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not yet. I mean, there you know only a couple of shows into it, so maybe that's something that'll develop over time. But again, you gotta you gotta roll with it, right? I, and I think that's anything that has had rankings or or start saying you know these matter, like it just falls apart so quick almost every time, no matter who's doing it. Yep. You well, know? no, the only place that does it well is Chikara mm-hmm. because they use an actual point system. Oh, do they? I'm not they aware use of the point an system. Actual point system, like and. As long as you keep track of the points and do some forward thinking, um, you, you can make it work. One point on the ratings here, and I want to get to some comments uh, in the chat room. Some people also have some uh, out there, also have some opinions on this. Um, there was an interesting note because I know somebody was here and they said, "I just got a notification from True TV that that like that AEW is going to be on." There was a uh, hey, there was a baseball threat last last week that uh, the one of the uh, playoff games was going to be. Maybe uh, overrunning into uh, TNT's showing of Dynamite, so they had simulcasted over the True TV, and these numbers do not include that, according to this article. Um, the the I read a different article that said um, the True TV numbers, the ratings for that, accounted for like a hundred grand more. Okay, so they still lost about three hundred thousand people. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was what I was referring to. I didn't know if it was the same article you were on. That's all the podcasters checking it out so they can talk about it on their shows that night. Uh, <laughs> so maybe who knows? Um, but I, I think I think it's a decent showing. There's still I feel like there's still excitement around it that people are going to give it like a little bit more chance. Um, and I think you're I think you know the NXT NXT is going to float around that. They're going to do very well with it. Also, they're still doing a program that does not cost them a whole lot of money to do. Nope. Being in the full sale show. And kind of hope that there. This is the other question: Do we stay with a full sale show? Do they start touring it? They like money, so they'll probably start touring it. But is that going to take away from that week to week show that we get? I th- I think they'll at least stick with it through the end of the year mm-hmm. because you have so much stuff going on through the end of the year. Like you have the holiday shows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's almost not con- not conducive. Reset to- going into twenty twenty. Yeah, like I could see maybe 
uh, for a WrestleMania push. That sounds good. I, and I am. I apologize. I did say I wanted to get to these comments in here. Um, oh, jeez. Sorry, the getting of these other comments over here. Uh, so Carlin's is saying the funny thing is that he's been watching AEW over NXT uh, live every week, and he's thinking he'll he'll get to NXT later and never gets around to it. I, you're just used to NXT always being there, right? So I think I think we're just kind of complacent in that. Uh, that will always have that good wrestling to go back to. Um, he's been having better matches. I'm sorry, he yeah. has. Uh, 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 Matt's also been like waking up to good New Japan matches day to day. So, uh, <laughs> Ponder says he's willing to give it a chance until they have the equivalent of uh, the the Cuck storyline. <laughs> I still feel uncomfortable saying that word on the show. By the way, plural. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we we when, may be when they get three, we may get three. <laughs> we may be we may be getting rid of one of them. Yeah, I know. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, also, Chris uh, says NXT has the better show, but it's hard to overcome AEW's atmosphere. It's bigger. It, it's bigger. It feels bigger. It feels like an event, you know, whether you're liking what's happening in the show itself. Um, their perception is bigger. I There's feel. definitely more advertising surrounding it. Mm-hmm. Like, there's actually, um, like, all right, so I went to see Joker this weekend. Mm-hmm. You know the thing Maria Menounos hosts? No. The- Maria Menounos has betrayed WWE and talked about Dynamite? Well, she doesn't know what they're doing. But um, the the before the movie thing where they give you like a little three minute behind the scenes thing, one yeah. of them was on AEW. Because there's always TNT content on there. That's the, yeah. only, that's the only reason I know of any programming. Listen, when I stopped watching WCW on TNT, I think TNT didn't exist for the last 15 years of my life. I literally cannot tell you programs that were on that channel. I Rizzoli and Isles, maybe? Or Who? That might be USA. That might, I, I, I thought that was a movie, wasn't isn't, it? Isn't Supernatural? And Super, no, maybe well, reruns. Reruns, like, yeah. Like Charmed or something like that, right? Uh, yeah. Franklin and Bash, was that on TNT? I don't know. What, is, what are you saying? Are you, are you talking about the Basher Brandon Brothers? They were on SmackDown, it. man. No, both of those are actual shows. I know that. No, so. nothing as iconic as La Femme, the Kita, and Silk Stockings. I'm sorry. Superman, oh, sorry. Superman and Lois Lane. I watched that before I went to school when I was growing up. On TNT. On TNT. Oh, Lois and Clark. Lois and Clark. Yeah. yeah. So that Dean Cain Superman. Those are the good old days. Hey, he may be coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's coming back, Sorg. <sighs> Mike, I started watching Star Trek Discovery this week. Oh no, it's good. It's good. It's good Is stuff. It? It's good track. It's good. It's good track. And uh, Dwight Schrute's a bad guy in one episode. So. Um, spoiler alert: he's a bad guy on The Office. I mean, okay, he's Dwight Schrute in space. Okay, that's. Okay. I mean, let's let's just put it there. Okay. okay. Anyways, so he's Dwight Space Schrute. Ooh. <laughs> Bear, bears and ble- bears and beats and Klingons. Bears and beats and Klingons. No bears, beats and Borgs. Oh, that's better too. No, no, no. There's no Borgs yet. There's no Borgs oh, yeah, yet. This Borg, is early. Wait for the Picard Borg. series to come out. It's a collective. If he's sorry. also in the yes, it's just a collective. Um, damn it! I was trying <laughs> really hard. I was trying really hard with that one. Hey guys. Uh, hey. Um, we like wrestling. I'm sure you do too. <laughs> You're listening to this show, and we got a lot of wrestling going on over at the Indie Wrestling Network and IndieWrestling.us. Uh, a lot of great stuff. Over on the Indie Wrestling Network, including Rise with a Y. We've got that edit in process right now. That will be coming up here before the end of the week. Uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling, including that. If you, we were just talking about going to the blindfold match with uh, young Xander over here. Uh, the the classic, the my, is, is, is man, it is competing with my top spot for favorite blindfold match ever. <laughs> really? That's nice. That's Thank right. You. <laughs> you know, it's you and Jake the Snake versus the model. Do you only know of two? Hopefully I not. only know... Well, and I've seen other ones, but they're definitely not nearly as memorable. So uh, so you can check that out as well as Busted Death <laughs> It helps match. that you were filming it, too. I it imagine. helps that I was filming it and got to witness it, but it was pretty incredible. Uh, more people should see those in Busted Death Match and, and, and just other insane stuff they're doing at Prospect Pro Wrestling. There's another show on November 9th, by the way, uh, as does Rise Wrestling. So if you're on either end of the city... You you got wrestling to go watch, and it's all damn good. 
Um, also on there, we got a lot of, we got a, another premier um, championship wrestling show that just went up there this month. We have uh, some classic stuff, including uh, best of Johnny Gargano from Prime Cuts. Uh, he just I was just listening to the uh, Iron On podcast with Gregory Iron. He's he's interviewing him, and they're talking about the good old days of uh, pro wrestling Ohio and their early feud. That's actually featured on uh, what we have up on the indie wrestling network as well as waffles with women and uh and everything else coming up duke and doe's hardcore memories and uh in the works is i can say producer missy remind me the message those people we were talking to this weekend uh rigatoni with refs in the works our, our food interview series of sorts listen if we say missy's gonna make something wrestlers will show up to talk you want me to make the rigatoni? You know how this is going to go. It's going to be. They love the waffles. Hey. Sorgatoni? Oh, there you go. But go check out that as well as other great VODs over at Indie Wrestling.us. And of course, the Indie, uh, indie uh, uh, Mayhem Show with some great interviews. We just talked with the good guys last week who debuted this past weekend at Fight Society. And uh, we have Peyton Graham coming up on that, too. And uh, subscribe to the channel. We're moving the interviews over to the AdWrestling.us YouTube page. A lot of free wrestling over there, too. Okay. I'm going to try to breathe for a moment. Uh, <laughs> Xander Gabriel. Michael Sword. The <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to catch up with you you got a lot of stuff going on here including tag team wrestling including blindfold uh, uh matches and everything um for the uninitiated and those that can't see the visuals right now uh and maybe not haven't caught you on the indie mayhem show real quick what is xander gabriel about xander gabriel is about entertainment but he's also about talking things out mm -hmm. uh, i originally had a talk show that got canceled it was called the xander zone uh, it wasn't too risky for TV. It pr perhaps it just wasn't entertaining enough, <laughs> which is why I came to the wrestling world and wanted to bring the Xanders in with me. Um, googly eyes were an accident that worked out great. Mm -hmm. And now I bring them everywhere. You can get them two for $5. And then I also have a light up fanny pack. I, I don't know. I just thought that one would be good. Um, I am also trying to mass produce fanny packs to sell cheap. So uh, buckle up. Your fanny pack, because there's going to be some to buy pretty soon. <laughs> Man, Mike, I, I know I saw you popping over there at, at some point. <laughs> Sorry, the Xander Zone was what um, Vin Diesel called his YouTube show in the movie Triple X. <laughs> but he spelled his with an X. Mine's a yes, Z. He did. Entirely he, different. He did. It's completely different. It just... It made me kind of wish that your show was also you jumping out of a car that you stole from a rich asshole while parachuting <laughs> to well, a river. That... I guess you haven't seen my show then, because guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you scream welcome to the Xander Zone at the same time? Uh, sometimes. I sometimes say welcome to the Z Xander Dome, but okay. that hasn't caught on as much, so I stick with Xander Zone. <laughs> Is Sorry, it's it the first thing I thought of that. I just got a lot of Vin Diesel images flooding my brain. At that oh, point. I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, deep cuts with Triple X over there. I've seen that movie too many times. Why? Is it, are you just bored on a Sunday and left TNT on? It's a good movie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what they used to have before AEW. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just all Triple X. And ironically, haven't seen either of the sequels. Really, I did see the Ice Cube one. That was, I mean, oh, it stay was in fine. the union. You're just it like looked... you're just like happy that Samuel L. Jackson's still around. But anyways, this is about Xander, not that Xander. Damn it. Um, so you got a lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, you, you're, uh, as I said in, in Prospect Pro Wrestling, it seems like um, um, you've had a lot of uh, interesting matches. Like I said, like a blindfold match. Um, tell us. Tell us a little bit. You're, you've only started in May. Officially in May. Yes. And already you're doing things like this. You're already in the tag team scene over at IWC. Although, interesting. I, I've seen clips here and there. And it seems to not entirely be going your, uh, how you would ho hope. Well, we're 4 now. You're 4 now. IWC. Really? Yeah, the tag team of Xander Gabriel and Bulk Nasty. Or okay. better known as Steak and Eggs now. Okay. Uh, so wait, wait Steak and Eggs? Yes, because we're 
we're beefy men and we have sizzling <laughs> offense. Who's the steak and who's the eggs? Well, I'm the steak. Okay. Both Grancy's big, but I, I, I mean, you can look at me, but um, we're steak and eggs. We were four and zero, oh, and I believe we have a good tag team championship opportunity coming up soon. We have a show coming up November second. Uh, coincidentally, winner takes all November second is the same day of my mother's birthday. So, oh, I know Bulk Nasty and I are going to celebrate hard at Winner Takes All on November second. I can um, tell you that. Uh, Bulk does not seem like one to get along with people. I, you know what? I I've been cordial with him. I'm still not sure if he even likes me, uh, <laughs> in general. <laughs> As a human. Uh, so <laughs> it's yeah, going to be fun to, to team with him. He's he's picky. Um, he has a really big, hard outer shell, kind of like uh, the, what are those Keurig? Like a crustacean? Crustacean, like a crab, like a shelter maybe. But no, once you get on the inside <laughs> of him, it's it's a lot better. Yeah. I became oh, really good God, friends with him. I'm just picturing the evolved version of Bulk Nasty as a cloister. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he's not. he doesn't have an ice heart. So, I mean, he's totally different. And we get along great. Um, we can also segue away into Pokemon if you want. I can talk about that for hours. But steak and eggs at IWC is really, I won't say it's the hottest thing in the company right now, although it's temperature-wise, steak and eggs have to be cooked to a certain temperature, so we are physically the hottest thing in the company. Um, but come November 2nd, we will have another tag team match, and ideally, we will also have steak and eggs t-shirts for sale. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, we need to start thinking of um, catchphrases now. I don't know. I think he's. I think he's got this down. <laughs> when you mess with steak and eggs, the yolk's on you. Ooh, Damn, that's good. All right, this is we what ha- this, this is what happens when you come on the show. I'm an this idea man. Yeah, yeah. We we just we just start spitballing things. Uh, so I I just give away hundred dollar ideas for free. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. why. <laughs> no, no more than that. That's why it doesn't work for a certain cup, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, I don't know where to go from that. Elijah Dean in the chat room. I'm sure you're getting along well with him up there. Yes, we uh, get along. I won't say we get along uh, well, but we get and we get along. Let's just say that. <laughs> he knows. Look, so there's a running gag with Elijah Dean that everyone wants to throw toilet paper at him. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I'm totally in on that and I always get him toilet paper every single show. But look, if Elijah has a problem with me, he can just come down here right now and say something. But if he doesn't, that means he's a coward. So if he's not here by the end of the show, he's officially a coward. That's what I, that's okay. what I think. Okay. Yeah. That kind of threw me the first time when, uh, when he came in and got the toilet paper, uh, over at TPW, but, uh, thankfully it's not happened up in revenge yet. Hey, Erie, how's your two toilet paper? How does Siri come up from that? <laughs> so uh yeah he says he hates you uh <laughs> alex says i like my wrestling like my uh, like i like my steak and eggs well done well wow. well great because we do them both well done so um like i said you you kind of you come in... sorry needed a moment for that one to cook um <laughs> always been impressed because right out of the gate i don't know too many people that come in <laughs> Uh, to wrestling, and especially this, I'm mean, oh, you're what six months in at this point, and yeah, May fourth, the fourth be with you is my be the fourth be with you. That's very. I'm never, I'm never gonna forget it now. Yeah, that's very appropriate. <laughs> I mean, um, I I haven't seen anybody come in with the media presence that you have, right? I guess your previous show experience aside, um. And to the point where Mike, he has, and, and this is this is something I've been talking with him a while. He has a backdrop when he's at the merch table, like a okay. a logoed like backdrop. Like I've been saying, he needs to cut like new Jap- after New Japan match style promos in front of. Hmm. Let's see if I can find a picture of it. <laughs> I was gonna say, what does the backdrop look like? Is it just? Like a logo, or should I hold this up to the camera? Uh, yeah, go ahead and hold that up, and maybe people can see it. So it's it's kind of like a you know one of those repeated logo kind of things. Well, well, maybe pull out. There it is. There is a focus. There you go. I might, might, you'll see that in the feed. At the I, moment. I, 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 I'm on. The I was gonna say you'll see that in the feed in a moment. <laughs> that is me yeah. and IWC Super Indie Champion Johnny Patch sharing a great moment. 
<laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it's great for posing pictures in front of. I mean, you know, I, I, that oh, it. okay. So I just got it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, no, it, it, you know, it, it, it it's very WWF superstars. Ah, there, there you go. go. All there right, there I like you it. go. You need a mean gene. I guess you are the mean gene, aren't you? Me or Mike? No, I was thinking you. You got the mustache. Uh, anyways, yeah, you can be your own mean gene. Why not? <laughs> Is he going to interview himself? Oh, that'd be. That's it. Um, I just got two great ideas: the yokes on you and interviewing myself. Thank you very much. All right. And You're now welcome. our job is done. <laughs> so <laughs> that'll be three fifty. <laughs> welcome to our Patreon. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, as, uh, you know, guys, you need to check him out. He's, uh, of course, you know, matches over at IndieWrestling.us. And you're, you're showing up in a bunch of different places, aren't you? Uh, I help out at Revenge Pro. and I've seen you a lot of places. <laughs> uh, I have gone to a lot more shows than I've been booked on so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of the day, and this can go back as far as Ring Crew you want to talk about with IWC, I just love going to indie wrestling shows, even if I'm not on the card, if I can help out, set up the ring, do security, whatever. It's, it's awesome. So yeah, I'm at a lot more places than I'm usually booked at, but two PW, like you mentioned mm-hmm. show coming up November 9th, I'll be there. Oh, I'm actually wrestling Elijah Dean and he's not showing up here. So I'm pretty sure cowardice is uh, proven. Yep. Uh, IWC November 2nd. Like I said, this Saturday, I don't know if you'll be doing the uh, route 30. Show uh, not that I'm aware of, but uh, that was a lot of fun at the uh, Havoc in the Heights. I know you had uh, Christian Noir. Christian Noir, that yeah. One. That was one of my... <laughs> so you can tell how young I am in the business because that was one of my first singles matches that went over like four minutes. Really? And I just didn't get absolutely demolished. Um, and it was fun. The crowd ate it up. I, I like that every match I have, I always figure out something. I'm like, oh, I should have done this better. And mm-hmm. So you say I'm only five, six months in. Uh, I'm doing a lot of my investing in my social media presence and i would like to do more in the actual wrestling there you go well, hey bu- uh hashtag book xander uh <laughs> it's worked for ronnie so far he's shown up a lot of places he's been on the show so uh let's get him out there and of course please go check out and there's some we have some samples on the youtube of you as well uh some partial and maybe some pool matches i think are hanging out on there so uh definitely go check that out and if you're on gold you can go check out that blindfold match uh in the pocky club maybe the poppy club <laughs> in the future <laughs> as well um where can people find you online and we'll have you we'll have you plug stuff at the end of the show too here so yeah you uh, lost your <laughs> you lost your fanny pack <laughs> so these will soon be on sale for sure uh online you can i do have a youtube page xander g mm-hmm. uh facebook xander gabriel instagram is xander underscore gabriel because there's actually another xander gabriel that Surprise. son of a bitch um twitter i am breaker of gains with a z after Breaker of Chains from Game of Thrones. I don't, I don't know if I have to explain that, but uh, capitalized on that one. Not on this show. Uh, Instagram is where I do a lot of my work. Facebook as well. And YouTube. anytime I do a video, I always upload it to my YouTube channel first, and then I put it out where I pick and choose. But mm-hmm. I'm trying to get He has better. a strategy. He has a social media strategy. <laughs> there it is. I'll be a young wrestlers, because we've, we've talked social media with uh, trainees and stuff in, in, in the recent past. And they're like, how do I do X? Like, you know, just kind of be everywhere. Right. Like what, what's kind of like, what is that? What is it that, that, that you know how to get out there? So I think one of the big advantages I have is my age. I, and I'm not apparently not older than 37, but I am 30 <laughs> and I've been work. I was in the military and I was in corporate America Mm -hmm. So I know how to already do a lot of social networking, how to advertise and present myself via silly resume for a desk job. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the me going to career fairs, things like this has kind of taught me here's how I can present myself on Facebook, on Instagram. If you look at my Facebook comment history, I don't comment on anything that's not wrestling related. Mm -hmm. If it's one of our fans saying, Daniel Hooven's the coolest guy ever. I'm going to say, no, he's not. He's weak. He's tiny. But I wouldn't actually say that, Dan. Um, but I don't ever comment if someone. <laughs> listen, listen. He's announced as the strongest Asian in the building. So, strongest. What was it? Strongest oh, Asian boy. in. Um, I can't remember. Uh, strongest Asian in Leechburg or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but as far as my social media presence, if somebody posts something political, 
anything like that, I completely stay away from it because I don't want to venture outside of anything that I I don't feel my opinion has a right mm. to explain. I don't know where I'm going with that, but but it, it, it's good advice for for it's, anybody who's you know putting themselves out there as a wrestler wants to kind of control that space and that message, right? Yes. I have a good control. I also get a lot of advice from other people who are in, for example, IWC, who are very good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to say his name again, but Elijah Dean, the man dime, has a very good social media presence, and I take mm-hmm. a lot of tips from him. I copy a lot of what Jackson Argos does in terms of how he puts things out there. That's- I've literally had somebody ask me, how do, I, how do I do social media like Jackson Argos? One, there's only one Jackson Argos, <laughs> And, Canada dry himself, and 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 keep in mind, this is the guy that was um, um, doing poses based on old diva swimsuit shoots and <laughs> posting those. Did you see that, Mad Mike? No, that's amazing. Though. Yeah, you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be looking that up here on the break, aren't you? It is. Uh, I may be looking at. I may be looking up right now. Yeah, it's fantastic. It might oh, be my favorite God. Jackson Argos, and hearing him talk about the process uh, of taking those photos how, <laughs> even how did we not have a game where we would bring up those specific poses and we'd have to guess which diva he was pretending to be oh there's one there's one there you go but anyways but yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot of people doing great stuff between those guys lee moriarty always put over his, he's doing fantastic stuff with his, his highlight videos yeah you know so it's it helps to bring some other skills there's in or so words. much knowledge right now but just right here in pittsburgh between mm-hmm. TPW, Revenge, IWC, Black Diamond down in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. There's so if you just get to a show an hour early and talk to somebody and ask them something, you unlimited. Yeah, it's thing. If you're like, how do I get to do social media like so and so? Ask them, get tips. You know, figure out what works for you too. Because I, I think you have a persona that kind of um, can be exposed on that those platforms pretty well. Um, before before we move on, Mike, I, I need you to see something because. Um, sometimes I gotta be honest, sometimes all the trainees kind of mush together in my head, but, uh, Xander here always stuck out to me and there's a reason for that. And you'll see for, for a moment, uh, <laughs> pre Xander, he stuck out to me. Uh, okay. you, you got a few tattoos yes. and there's one that I, 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 do you remember me commenting on back in the day when I was still hanging out at IWC? The Majora's mask tattoo on my calf? No, no, no. The one on your arm over there. The Metroid. The no, Lucha. the Lucha. Ah. And I want Mad Mike to see that one real quick. Check, Check that out. You'll see that in a moment. So it's a half Lucha underground and half, uh, what's the other skull? So this is uh, Day of the Dead Sugar Skull style. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to get something. I really wanted a Sugar Skull one. And I really wanted something that would. This was third third season uh, Lucha Underground before, mm-hmm. <laughs> before the fall of the company. but So I went ahead and just I asked the artist to do half Sugar Skull, half of the Lucha mask. And. Yeah, it's Excellent. not it's not my most favorite one because all of them are my favorite. I mean, it's like my children, but um, I really like this one, especially because it's right here on the bicep line. So if I wear something like this, it's not too inappropriate hanging out, mm-hmm. but it's enough to garner people's interest. And a lot of wrestling fans know Lucha Underground, and then a lot of tattoo fans know Sugar Skull style. So I'm really hitting two things that I absolutely loved. Awesome. I, I have a Lucha Underground air freshener in my car. <laughs> <laughs> that's his level of dedication <laughs> mm-hmm. it's it's great because they they had the the wrestle crate for lucha underground that was like a limited edition as oh, soon as yeah. i saw the email i bought it immediately i'm like i don't care what's in it just give me stuff it's vintage now uh, mad yeah. mike also i but weren't you gifted a uh, lucha underground i mug? i have a loot i have a lucha underground 100 episodes mug mm-hmm. from one of the executive producers of the show yes uh, we were definitely big into the Lucha Underground here. Had many people. We, we were mentioned on the what looks like series finale now. <laughs> oh, geez, that was a series finale. We we killed the show. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's it still lives on in the silent guy standing behind Chris Jericho. No, it does. <laughs> he's he's the champion. Oh, he is. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I I really hope that. He and Luchasaurus are going to meet, mm-hmm. and they're and he's just gonna freak out. He's gonna be like, "You were decapitated! What are you doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! Hey, Xander, thanks for joining us. We're gonna be back with the big question. 
uh, in a moment. But in the meantime, I want to throw out to our other friends who are all over the place. Our friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza uh, right up the street here, uh, helping feed our guests here on Tuesday nights uh, and uh, for this and uh, the awesome cast, of course. Four locations here in the area in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, out towards the airport, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And I know a lot of you guys are all over the country, maybe some international fans as well, hanging out, listening to the podcast. I see the stats. I see you guys. I see you, France. Um, but if you want to help, hey, they only had one location when we started. And do they have pizza in France? Um, anyways, they only had one location when they started. So wherever you may be, take a picture of... of a Broadway Avenue in your town, most have them, and help their global, yes, global, France expansion, and uh, take a picture of that Broadway Avenue, tweet PGH underscore slice on the Twitter, and say, I would like a slice on my Broadway. Go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Thank you to them for supporting the Wrestling Mayhem Show and Pittsburgh Podcasting for so many years hey guys we'll be back after katie talks to you a little about some other things we do around here with sidekick media services with the big question sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com all right we are back and the uh the uh sorgatron media draft is going on alex cars of occupy pro wrestling is helping uh, uh facilitate this of course round one was dropped in the chat you'll have to check that out. i know there's some commentary on that but let's go real quick and this is there's some size in here mike are you wait mike you were in the first one you're in the first no you're in this round no no i'm not in the first that's round, right first so. of all mike is sore because he was not drafted in the first round of the sorgatron nope. media uh draft nope i i i don't i don't even know half these people who the fuck is Ch- uh, chachi who the fuck is that? He's been on the injured reserve for a while. That that person has not podcasted in thirteen. He's guys. technically his voice is on this show every week. <sighs> hmm? Yeah, but for what that's worth. Oh man, man. Uh, the game. <laughs> by the way, the game journey dot com. I just plugged that just to make up for that. So we're going down. Everybody mm-hmm. is up for grabs in the Sorgatron Media Draft. First of all, the um, awesome cast is drafted the mainstream Matt. So. So, By the way, um, the uh, the next pick, Sorg, yes, is picking Jinder Mahal over Samoa Joe. That's, that's I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, our friends at the, the, the Dungeons and Dragons podcast, Bardic Mystery Tour, is drafting Ronnie Starks. Yep, that's what you get for not being here. Actually, he's probably really. Actually, I think he does do a D and D night with somebody. He he's so the Jinder Mahal in. of this draft. He is the Jinder. Bold Knights out drafts Todd Tundera of the Thrifty Podcast, who's been on the show. Always has some good, good. He's the one that had the pile of wrestling buddies on the couch the one time. He like every wrestling buddy, like even WCW ones. It was great. Uh, Bold Sports drafts the Beach man, Beast Man. I'm curious his his thoughts on the River Hounds. Uh, broadcast podcast drafts Steve. <laughs> broadcast the broadcast podcast is a women's podcast. <laughs> And, and there and, are no women on it. And a bold Steve from uh, uh, Bull Sports. Uh, <laughs> comic book pitch drafts Mad Mike. That is appropriate and that is a good pick. Yeah, no, I, I'm fine with that. I don't know who these people are that I would be on the show with. But sure. He, he doesn't listen to the product. Uh, Occupy I, Wrestling I'm drafts very busy. Uh, Natalie from the Broadcast Podcast. That would be interesting. Uh, that, would be the, that would be the scene reporter for the Post-Gazette, by the way. Technically. Uh, also, the Scarehouse Podcast drafts Alex Smiley from Occupy Pro Wrestling. Accurate. Thrifty Podcast drafts Bo Diggity. That works. And the Wrestling Man Show drafts Jim Ellermeyer from Fishing Without Bait. That would be our mindfulness podcast. So, <laughs> there you go. Round two of the Sorgatron Media drafts. And the Dancing Stoke Monkey is off camera. Uh, excited for this. So... <laughs> You're asking about your haircut in the chat. Xander Gabriel still with us. The batteries have not run out on his blinking uh, fanny pack. Yes, I have no idea long... what the draft is about. But... <laughs> it's okay. I don't really know. It's okay. Neither do we on this program or any other one this week. Right. So uh, yeah, you know. no draft. No draft makes sense. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. The, the draft in WWE Cesaro and the Iconics are not drafted. That is bullshit. What the fuck? Well, the... one of them married somebody in AEW, so it might be a. Uh... 
Wait, which one? Um, Peyton. Peyton Royce married Mr. Sean Spears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the perfect 10 in Ty Dillinger. Get it? Get it? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Get it? Ah. Uh... No, but like. <laughs> Alex, said, Alex says half of the fun is me telling you guys what the different shows are that you've ever heard of on this network. <laughs> uh, anyways. So I knew, I knew some of them. The big question: You're mad, Mike, because of so many, so many people that have been left off the draft, and, and mm-hmm. that's questionable. And I, I think anybody that's off the draft is up for grabs at NXT. Oh, if Cesaro isn't showing up Ooh. to challenge the winner of Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic tomorrow oh, night, oh jeez, I'm gonna riot. Oh jeez. Oh, by the way, before we get to the big question, a congratulations to longtime friend of the show. And man who owns a title shot still to Mad Mike, yes. one Ray Rowe, mm-hmm. Eric from uh, the Viking Raiders. Yes. I I uh, will be cashing in my title shot as soon as I find a partner. That's right. Find a suit. If you have any ideas for suitable partners for Mad Mike to take on the Vikings, mm-hmm. uh, please uh, be please uh, email Mad Mike Gonna Die at uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Yes. Wait. Yes. Moving on to the big question. <laughs> <laughs> so that this draft happened, and we struck it up a little bit. I don't know what we shook up. It felt like the most non consequential. Nothing draft. was shaken up. It just Tw- like twenty eight people changed brands. Yes, and half of them are either in real life couples or were already feuding with the same person. Yeah, it was it was more like who got married realignment kind of wasn't it? so I I get what they're and, there, and there's supposed to be a blockbuster trade at least there was supposed to be something announced after the the fucking Astros beat the Yankees oh yeah tonight um, on FS1 by the way yeah the, I'm the actually new... gonna look it up right now to see I, if it was announced I don't want to I I do want to spoil it because I don't think it was a good one but I was watching it right before I got here I was getting a haircut okay thank you great clips uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross were traded to SmackDown. For Together. Who? Yeah. Because they were split originally, I think. That is what Triple H said. That's who were they traded for? I don't think they were traded. I think they were literally just... I think it's just that they oh, both were Alexa split. Bliss. Yeah, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross traded to SmackDown. In exchange, Raw will get future draft pick... Consid- <laughs> the draft is over! Well, the so next in other draft. words... In <laughs> other words... They fucked up and realized we have no women on SmackDown now. So, so, so it's it's like future draft. Like, so if there, if, no future draft if one of the shows loses the ratings war or Sweet Week or something, does that mean that they get like first pick oh next God. season or something? That like they become the, is it the Cleveland no Browns role? No one knows how to I draft. Mean, it's no one knows how to draft. Like, oh, yeah, but it's on Fox, so. It's legit. <laughs> that makes it more important. No one look at all those. A draft. Look at all those first draft picks they talked to on the the sets of their respective NFL uh, programming on Fox Sports. Mike, that made it so important. Oh yeah, it sure did. <laughs> no, uh, that. Oh my god, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard of. Big question, Mike. Who would you have left off the draft? Honestly, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. He was he even drafted for anything. Yeah, he was drafted to SmackDown was he because drafted? he's the WWE champion, just by default. No, oh. but like, I would I would have left a big not Brock Lesnar because he's the champion, obviously, so you can't leave him off. I would have left off a big name who hasn't done a lot recently, mm-hmm. so that they can show up on a show and kind of refresh themselves. Ooh. Um. I would have left off I'm excited. Ooh, the Miz. Mm. The Miz. And I would ha- and I would run little backstage segments because if you're a free agent in this in this version of their draft, if you're a free agent, you have the choice to go to which brand you want. Mm-hmm. So Much like Scott Steiner did in 2002. Like, when Scott Steiner came into WWE, he was a free agent. Both Raw and SmackDown were trying to get him on their show. 
I think you could have done that with someone like The Miz and have Raw, SmackDown, and even NXT try to bid to get The Miz. Because then it makes... And, and The Miz is just an example. You could have used anyone who needs a little bit of freshening up. It makes that person important. Um, from the chat room, uh, both Potter and uh, Alex Cars would have left off The Fiend. Who would want the insane madman that's practically killing but everybody? See, but see, that's why you have to draft him, because you wouldn't have brands necessarily willingly have The Fiend on your show. Hmm. I would have had my people who were performing the drafts rather commentate on the fiend saying, man, we should go for the fiend, but I just don't know. So I would have left him off, but I would have made a point to point out that they were leaving him off on purpose. Yeah. 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 Like, like that's, we, yeah, that's fair. He's a little too crazy for us or something. like that. That's the thing. It felt like there was a picture, like they, they showed these images of them in the boardrooms and to kind of humanize the process. There are people making choices. But we completely just let Stephanie McMahon do it and not commentate other than, mm-hmm. like, it felt like everything was a canned response. It was so bad. Yeah, like, like, if you're going to have all these so-called celebrities, at least have them announce the picks. Mm-hmm. Like, at least have them announce the picks. Mm-hmm. Like, because otherwise it serves literally no purpose because none of them were reacting to anything specific. It's like, hey, Sorg, boy, that was sure. It's like if we did our, our Monday podcast and I said, boy, Sorg, that sure was a show, wasn't it? <laughs> and then that was all we said and we signed off. Is that a preview of WWE's backstage that's uh, premiering on FS1? <laughs> Probably, but you know what I'd rather see on FS1? Hmm. The bump. Oh. so The bump is great. I want to get to more questions. Wait, hold on. Hold, yeah. Put a pin in that for a moment. Yeah, I'm Xander, putting a pin. Xander, what are, who would you have kind of left off this draft? Uh, I actually really like the answer The Miz. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, I'll jump into another topic. He's one of my favorite wrestlers. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that shows in my character, but nah. yeah, him, him coming back with like a big like surprise return or something for yeah. a certain title, maybe Intercontinental. Uh, he's always best been, after like a comeback reboot. Reboot. Yeah. Um, was John John Cena wasn't drafted, right? No, he's busy with the Yeah, he fire. might he no, might be one of those people that were left off so he could cuz I would think they would still want to plug the name yeah. John Cena with the hope that he comes back, but See him in a month, maybe when he promotes that movie. I can understand Brock Lesnar being left off like Mike said maybe. Um who else would I have left off? Xander Gabriel definitely left him off. <laughs> um Was Elias drafted? Yes, yes, he was. He was he was drafted last night to SmackDown. I he, saw Drew. Yeah. Drew McIntyre. I would have left him off because I know he's coming back from an injury and I think right. his return supr- like now we we know that he's oh he's still there. Don't forget about him, but I would have rather forget about him and then he comes back and just like, well to me. It was yeah. um <clears throat> or he comes back on both shows and people have to vie for his talents. The yes. Samoa Joe situation bothered me. Oh my god, I felt so bad for Joe. Joe is like a badass freaking like choking people out and he has to sit there and make nice with name and Booker T like, and he has to sit there and not be super angry that all of these people, Mm -hmm. including Jinder Mahal Mm -hmm. were picked ahead of Samoa Joe. There was a, the Corey, Corey Graves had a tweet about it, like how uh, uh, Samoa Joe looked like a really angry accountant or something out there. Uh, So yeah, it, it was, it was just an odd position to put them in you know hey get on tv so people see you but like, you know who should have been put in that position heath slater yes no i'm serious yes. Heath slater should have been there because the last time they did a draft heath slater was the only one that was not drafted so here's the big thing though too like if you're that. and the other thing is like after the, these periods um all these guys are now free agents mm-hmm they have been like free agents and can vie for a position on any of the shows. So I guess that opens up to more Heath Slater type stories or NXT pop ups. They're not going to do anything. You know, They're not going to do anything because the people that were left off are not involved in stories. There's like no room for anything. And we have even less so with them absorbing all the 205 live talent. 
Mm -hmm. And I have a question, like a legitimate question. Is the 24-7 championship a floating title? Mm. Is it anymore? Because the women's title anymore. Well, the the women's titles, they said on Raw that the champions can still defend on both shows. But if Asuka and Kyrie were to lose, Mm -hmm. they would be left on Raw. Okay, so you're left off on wherever you were drafted to. Yeah, ideally. and that's probably why Alexa and Nikki Cross were drafted back. I'm just waiting. Them, I'm just waiting for them to go wild card roll in like two weeks again. Really, because they did after the last up, one. I want them. I want the women's tag ta- the tag champs to show up on NXT. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know who they'd wrestle at this point, but it should happen at some point. Aaliyah and Vanessa Bourne. Oh yeah, oh. actually that that'd be perfect. Are you guys? I I I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Hundred percent on them yet? Oh, neither am I. I just want to see Oscar Oscar kick their faces. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, sure. <laughs> just just for fun. Yeah, exactly. Just for funsies. If she's one, that, I, I love both of those go back because I mean, obviously the big the biggest thing, other than maybe Oscar Charlotte at WrestleMania, you know, was was them at NXT. So you know, much like Finn is kind of being having a resurgence over there right now. So. Oh, boy. Well, we'll see what's going on out there. Hey, Mike, I just told you to put a pin on something. What was that I wanted to come back to? It was the bump. The bump. Um, let's talk about the bump in a moment. Uh, but first, I want to give... No, we're not going to plug that right now. Hey, guys, there's a lot of wrestling in Pittsburgh. I understand. Xander's at half their shows. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, hey, we announcements. So, actually, a couple things. And this is kind of a newsy slash advertising thing. So we want you to go check out PittsburghWrestling.com if you are in the area. And we got a great calendar over there of all the wrestling shows happening in the Pittsburgh area within an hour drive. So that includes our friends at Rise Wrestling and and Prospect Pro Wrestling. uh, An hour drive from Pittsburgh. So you can check out. uh, What do we count? We counted about 13 wrestling shows in the Pittsburgh area in the month of October. And I, I think near that number is going to be uh, happening next month uh, in November with a you know, with a, a Ring, Ring of Honor coming into town and whatever else we got AEW this month Wrestle Rex and all of your you know RWA's Angel Gates and everything over there. But also a uh, fun story that happened over there. Well, two things. First of all, go check out Pittsburgh Current, uh, PittsburghCurrent.com. Um, I have an article now, currently Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, currently wrestling. Uh, where we are featuring what is going on in the independent wrestling uh, uh, scene and uh, what's upcoming. We talk a little bit in there about Brick Baker, Brick ba- Dr. Britt Baker's connection here to Pittsburgh with AEW coming to town in uh, just about a week. Yeah, a week from yeah. tomorrow, right? And uh, everything going on and shows coming up, including this weekend's Renegade Wrestling uh, Alliance and Rumble on Route 30. Uh, both Saturday. You could, I, And timing-wise, you could go to both shows. I actually have other obligations after the Route 30 show. Well, maybe yes, not you, could, but I'm just saying as a fan. I feel like some people, uh, actual wrestlers, might be doing. I think Sam. Shows. I think Sam Adonis is at both shows. So, um, so, but you know, that that shows like kind of what's going on here and the cool things happen. Hell, there's wrestling up up the road in Sheridan. I believe I'm going to on Sunday. Um, I think I'm going to wrestling or some wrestling themed event about six of seven days in a row next week. Oh, you're, you're going to AEW, I imagine. There's AEW, there's Wrestle Rex, there's Choke Slam happening, which isn't even on the calendar because it's not a quote wrestling show, but um, I, I think they're watching wrestling and commenting on it, but meaning to check it out. Uh, a lot of fun stuff going on over there. Also, shout out this is the news item on this. Uh, we try to throw stories in here with local Pittsburgh wrestlers when they're in the media. And most recently, shout out to Shirley Doe. Let's see if I can, whoop, didn't plug it back in. Uh, Shirley Doe's in Esquire magazine, you guys. There you go. I wish I had, I Wait, wish I had it on your for foot. like fashion tips. Yeah. For, yes, because if anybody's a fashionable, it's Shirley Doe. <laughs> Is so she talking about the latest ECW fashion trend. I wish I had the camera on any of your faces when I said that. I'm, I apologize. Uh, but he was there because you guys know about the Ribera Steakhouse in Japan. You guys are where a lot of wrestlers. A lot, a lot of wrestlers I went through there. Story. Sam Hansen, guys, guys like that, right? And, and, and Shirley Doe went to Japan. You know, uh, you know, often chronicled. We, we talked about it a little bit, I believe, on the hardcore um, uh, memories over on the network, and uh, we talked about it in interviews and stuff on this. And uh, he got interviewed for a piece for that about the most coveted piece of menswear, the Ribera jacket from the Ribera Steakhouse, 
And uh, yeah, he was interviewed as part of that because he's one of those. He's one of like maybe a thousand people that have a Robera jacket and uh, featured on there. And I also, as I was, uh, I posted this um, in the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, along with a story that was done in 2013 that WWE.com actually did of a lot of the wrestlers. And it was like the oral, you can look up the oral history of the Robera Steakhouse. So a really cool kind of piece of um, wrestling memorabilia, wrestling history of all these guys going through Japan. And probably anybody who's anybody probably went through that steakhouse. I understand it's not really that great of a steakhouse. It's just where everybody went. It's a tradition. <laughs> it's yeah. a tradition. So, uh, if it's in Japan and it's a steakhouse and they have actual wagyu beef, it's a good steakhouse. Okay. As as someone who's had wagyu beef in Japan, it's good. Well, that's right. You are you are world traveled, sir. Yes, somewhat. One day, one day I'm getting to Japan, sir. That's that's happening. Um, let's check in here with the Sorotron Media Draft. One last check in. Uh, Alex Cars of Occupy Pro Wrestling is helping us put together. We put out the, together the charts. We have this together. Awesome cast. Our tech podcast is uh, drafting Flo Calhoun of the Bardic Mystery Tour. I guess you should check that out if you're Dungeon Dragons fans. Uh, Chilla, our gadget guru on Awesome Cast, has been drafted in exchange to the Bardic Mystery Tour. Our Bold Nights Out has drafted uh, Sammy Stone. Uh, a singer from Bardic Mystery Tour. They're getting a lot of plays here in the third. I have been drafted to Bold Sports. I have not regularly regularly I watched. Say, sword. Do you, do you sports? I don't sports. I haven't watched sports in like five years regularly. Hmm. I barely remember how hockey works. Uh, the broadcast broadcast podcast has drafted drafted Steve from Bold Sports. Uh, also, still fun. I feel like that didn't that just happen in the last one. He just got redrafted. Oh, because he's on two bold podcasts. Uh, the comic book pit has drafted Dan Greenwald from comic book. Wait, it is like repeat ones happening now. Comic books have also uh, drafted Dutters. No, Fishing Without Bait has drafted Dutters. Occupy Pro Wrestling now has drafted what producer. Is, what Mr. is you keep the couples together? I'm That's sure. right. We were talking about a lot of relationship advice this week. Uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling has drafted producer Missy. I see what's happening here. Mm-hmm. Does that mean? Does that mean she has to move to California? This is this is all a plot. I wonder who. Also, the Scarehouse Podcast has uh, uh, drafted Amanda Narcissi of uh, Bold Nights Out. And the Thrifty Podcast has drafted the Rev Ron Hunt. How did he get in this list? No one, uh, None of this is how a draft works. And the Wrestling Mayhem Show keeps the Riz. There you go. The Sorgatron. Let's see. Ron, Ronnie, uh, <laughs> Ronnie starts in the chat room to let us know the Jane Silent Bob reboot was awesome. Good. No spoilers. No spoilers. How are you? I bet Snoochie Boochies was said. Damn it, Sorg. Anyways, we got a couple more stories here to talk about. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, go ahead. The bump. The bump. Oh, yeah. Tell me about the bump. What, what is happening with the bump? Because I'm seeing clips from this thing now. When did this start? Uh, a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. It is a Wednesday morning show on the WWE Network. Okay. It's great. <laughs> It's legitimately a lot of fun. Is it done up there in the studio? Yes. That explains it. That explains it. It's legitimately a lot of fun. It's hosted by Caleb Braxton mm-hmm. and a bunch of random guys whose names I do not know. But also, um, oh, I forget her name. The um, backstage interviewer that WWE got from Impact. I Mackenzie. Have... Oh, Mackenzie. Okay. Is, all, is also on it. Um, but they had Seth Rollins on one week. Okay, I believe Becky Lynch is on this week. Okay, it, it looks like it looks like one of those shows I'd watch that I would never watch on IGN. Yes. <laughs> okay, it's very much like that, but it's all wrestling talk. Okay, it, 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 it seems really annoying whenever I've seen clips. No, it's not. It's fun. Okay, it, it's good when you get into it. Yeah, okay. you, you have you. Clips don't do the show justice. Like, it's honestly, it'd be a great thing for you to put on in the background while you're doing something else. Mm, just like this podcast. Um, and I I can't even imagine what they're going to be talking about with the draft and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, is it is it kind of like, is it, are they kayfabing it or are they, you know, or are they like fans? Little from column A, little from column B. Okay. 
Because yeah, like it, but they don't have like the fucking shitheads on there like Sam Roberts. So <laughs> tell us what you really think about that. Jeez. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was being too nice. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Interesting. Not a Sam Roberts fan. Okay. No, Wait, no. Yeah, he's been really shitty. He, well, he, Dana Brooke. He what, can go to hell. Yeah, yeah. He was really nasty about Dana Brooke on one of those pre-shows. But no, it wasn't on pre-show. It was on main event. It was on main event? It was on main event during doing commentary. Oh, God. They're having him doing commentary? Yeah. It's not good. Wow. That's why he's on main event. Yeah, exactly. Where, that's where they just kind of try shit out, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, you. one before Raw or SmackDown? Yeah, that's one before Raw. Raw. Because I think it's that's before Raw and 205 Live was after SmackDown until it got canceled this week. We're not sure. We're not sure. Is it, is it like, 205 Live aired last week. It did. It didn't air the week before. Oh, so it's been off for two weeks. No, it's been it was off for one week. It was off for the debut week of SmackDown. Okay. But it was back this week. Oh, it was back this week. Okay. I'm wondering if it's just because of how SmackDown ended in its debut week with uh, That's Gotta Be Kane. <laughs> that's gotta be Kane Velasquez yeah. oh uh, you know what whenever we int- hold on hold on Sorg Phil I'm oh going no to- oh no Sorg yeah I, I guess it would be a little tough to see hey there's Kane Velasquez um, and now watch these flippy guys uh, for the next hour <laughs> people sticking around for that and was at the stable center I don't know maybe I don't know it seemed like a last minute decision because they were advertising that during the week. So, uh, are you you setting up over there, Mike? Uh, I I am I'm okay. I'm I, I'll I'll spoil what I'm about to do. Okay. Uh, that's got to be keen. Eso tiene que ser keen. That's that's got to be keen in Spanish. Oh, we're going to learn so much more Spanish now that Cain Velasquez is around. <laughs> it's going to be like Lucha Underground all over again. Eso tiene que ser Cain! Yeah. I, I do like Rey Mysterio just being like, my big friend's going to kick your ass again. I mean, I, that I, that era of it, I'm actually kind of okay with. Kick his ass. What's that? Rey Mysterio should just kick Brock's ass. Yeah. Brock destroyed his son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brock destroyed Eddie's son. <laughs> Yeah, and then <laughs> at the very least, Ray should try to kick his ass once, mm-hmm. and then bring in Cain Velasquez. Like, uh, it, 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 everything about it bothers me. Everything about it bothers me. It bothers me that they're doing this a Halloween panic. Mm-hmm. Everything mm-hmm. bothers me about it. Yeah, yeah. The uh, rumble in the desert. Uh, yeah, now now the fiend is going to be a Halloween panic. I guarantee he's not bringing the severed headlamp there. Ooh, ooh. yeah. No, I guarantee he's not doing that. Dude, that's yeah. outside. They're not going to be. They're not going to be doing quite as much atmospheric stuff with that oh. show, probably. Oh, probably not. No, please, no red lights. And, and it's going to kill the fiend's character. Even more. You mean like that time that Bray Wyatt came out and did the Fireflies in the daytime at WrestleMania? What was it, twenty uh, thirty-five? Or I whatever. thought that was okay. Yeah, I thought that was fine. Okay, but that's because Bray had lost most of his mystique at that point. Undertaker also came out in the daylight. That yeah. was rough. Yeah, they they held they held off that match as long as they fucking could. Mm-hmm. And no, Alex, I'm not looking up. Where's my fucking music in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody out there will, I'm sure. I'm uh, sure. We'll leave that as a fan, um, a fan uh, uh, goal out there. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So, anyways, what else do we have here? Bruce Pritchard has been announced as the executive director of Friday Night SmackDown. Eric Bischoff is out. That didn't last long. Nope. No. I, was it was it expected to last? I don't know that. what was going to happen because I feel like nothing did happen. I feel like we just still got the same SmackDown, so, but, you know, the, I don't know, dirt sheet reporting says that uh, Vince was already rewriting all of his stuff anyways, which is like, well, why did we even hire somebody? You know, why did we put this guy in charge who kicked our ass in ratings 20 years ago to not let him help? 
So and and again, the first time Eric Bischoff was officially in a creative capacity with WWE, he had never been in creative. He was just talent before when we saw him on TV. So I don't know. Um, Raw's got interesting, somewhat sort of. Sorry, WrestleMania 31 was the Bray Wyatt outside. Um, thanks, Alex, for putting that up. Uh, Raw's not even that interesting, to be honest. No, oh, it's 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 so weird because we my week is structured around Monday Night Raw. We sit down, we watch it. For better or for worse, uh. <laughs> like here, here, here's the thing that's bothering me about Raw. The the biggest thing that's bothering me about Raw. Okay, look at the male talent of WWE. Okay, across the board. If you want to do a Rusev and Lana have marital strife angle, fine. Okay, I don't like it, but fine. It works for Edge. Fine. Who is the least like Edge person on the entire male roster? That is Bobby Lashley. Mm -hmm. Like, you could have done this with anyone else. Legitimately, anyone else. Could you imagine this angle if it was... Let's uh trying to pick someone at random. Elias. Elias. <laughs> sure. Elias lures Lana in with his serenade song and seduces her. Ooh, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Or or if you if you want to actually build someone who needs it, EC3. Mm-hmm. EC3 and Lana would be a perfect match. I don't think he's allowed on TV. He's definitely not. <laughs> but but like I'm just going through a list of people who would be better at this than Bobby Lashley, the guy who last we saw him was bending over and showing his ass because that was his favorite pose. Great glutes, by the way. Let me tell you. Phenomenal <laughs> glutes. He looked like Ahmed Johnson in 96. It was great. But he's the least sexiest person on the roster. When Edge did this exact storyline, Edge was a sleazeball. Mm-hmm. Like, Edge just looked like a sleazeball. He acted like a sleazeball. Like, this, and we, the only reason they didn't do it is because we've tried before. This is Dolph Ziggler territory. This is Robert Roode territory. Like, there are so many other people that could have done oh, this. Robert Roode. There are so many other people that could have done this story justice. Even Hell, Dolph. Even I'd, Dolph. I'd even say Ali. Oh. I'd even say Ali if you want it. If you want to flip someone, mm-hmm. Ali. Yes. Or hell, Andrade. Or if you want to build someone from 205, Umberto Carrillo. Like. And the sad thing is, the match between Lashley and Rusev is going to suck. Mm-hmm. It's going to suck so fucking much. It's not going to be worth it at all. Or, you know who should have done this? Fucking Cesaro. Because Cesaro can legitimately make anything work. And I'm pretty sure he's actually James Bond. <laughs> but uh, he's more of a James Bond villain, isn't he? Like a really good James Bond villain. I see in all my stories, James Bond is the actual villain. Okay. Oh, the villains just want to help the world, Sork. Some of them just want a golden gun. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I got you. I got you. I I, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but there are so many people who can do that storyline better than Lashley. And 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 the ones that started this, um, Kevin Bennett. Kevin Canellis. Mike no, Mike Canell. Mike, Mike Bennett. Yeah. Kevin Bennett is another guy in Erie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mixing my deals up. Actually, I think he's out of Buffalo. But um uh yeah, Mike Bennett, Mike Canellis, um, apparently asked for his release and very publicly told everybody. I don't know if he's been granted it just yet. Yeah, but, I, uh, I don't know if he's going to be. They just signed a new deal recently. He signed on June and he requests his release um today. I don't blame him. This week, uh, just uh, says he's frustrated and wants to wrestle more than one day a week, and he's frustrated. 
and he's probably frustrated with the fact that his storyline has been, you're not the father of your wife's child. Well, and not only that, it's turned into, it's moved on to these other this other group of people now. Yeah. So he's not even getting the benefit of being in a storyline on Raw every week. Which yeah. you can say, at least like he's featured on Raw every week as whatever they're setting him up for be, to be, right? But, man, that's rough. And he was a good, he was a really good wrestler in Ring of Honor. That's He's cool. a really good wrestler on 205 Live. Mm-hmm. And they just tried um, aligning him with Brian Kendrick on 205 Live, and now I'm guessing that's done. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't blame him for asking for his release. Yeah. Honestly, I was I was shocked they re-signed in the first place. Yeah, me too. Especially they, since they he... up a dump truck of money. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They must have. Yeah, but uh, this is the day and age where there's a lot of other options out there. I'm sure um, AW may be uh, uh, more than willing, or even just going back to Ring of Honor right now. You, you know, know what? They even could use the they, they could the use whole, the talent. Even if they did the whole no compete thing, where he can't show up on a televised product, mm-hmm. there's other there's other avenues. Mm-hmm. Plenty other plenty of indies doing great things out there. That, uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just gonna ask. Do you think Eric Bischoff goes? To another wrestling company, or do you think he just? I don't know if he really wants. To. I don't know if he's like. I was surprised he went for this because I didn't feel like he had the bug to do wrestling again. I don't think he has it in him anymore. No, he... I mean, uh, he he hit it first. Listen, not everybody's Vince <laughs> that can do this as long as he does. Bruce disappeared for a while, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Bruce Pritchard disappeared for a while, and and I guess did other projects and stuff. Sure, but um. Man, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think, I don't want to say that. Not that Eric was a flash in the pan, but he had that one good run in him and changed the industry. Was successful. It's the one good idea that he stole from someone else. <laughs> You're talking about the NWO from the uh, yep. New Japan stuff, yes. yes. But still, no. There were some things they did that were pretty genius and little things that they're off the radar for most of us. Um, but it did work. Oh, like, like what? He restructured WCW. He pulled it out of the arenas, put it into the studios, like little things like that that built them up and okay, put them in a position to be successful when something took off. But creatively, what did he actually do? Uh, the, the, the NWO and, and convincing Hulk Hogan to go heel. That's it. Like, really? That's about it. Uh, like, Gold, Goldberg. Run, run show? Yes. Yeah, he had a lot of really good ideas. Mm-hmm. Like running backstage segments when pe- when people weren't doing that at the time, so so it made so it looked more real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But like as far as actual creative content on the show, I think. Listen, man, nineteen ninety six ninety seven, WCW attracted me more than WWF did because Hulk Hogan turned heel. Uh, went off that bloom pretty quick. No, 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 no. I, I just enjoyed the wrestling product more than I did WWF. It's okay. still that, hard for me to go to 1996, 1997 WWF and, and sit down and enjoy it. Okay. It, but that, it, that has more to do with the actual talent. Uh, <laughs> the type of show, the air about it. Like I always thought WCW was better produced uh, in that era, at least. Is right? It, didn't Bischoff also have the? Uh, he decided to have the cruiserweights on the, the ending. Cruiserweights were a big thing, at, like right? the uh, hour mark. Right. Which was to... WWF never did anything as good as the cruiserweights. Yeah, but that, but that's talent. Mm-hmm. That's not, they, besides a Chris Jericho storyline that he himself pitched, mm-hmm. or an Eddie Guerrero storyline that he himself pitched. There were no good cruisers. I would no, no. I would create. I, it wasn't about the storylines. It's about the wrestling in the ring. That's what I was attracted to me. But that's why I probably like AEW better than you're going to. We're talking about Eric Bischoff working as a creative person. Ah, uh, uh, just like putting putting wrestlers who can wrestle good on screen. I I think it's more than I I would not put him in that creative part. I would put him as a showrunner. But yeah, that's my point. I think it's a different thing because. Booking wrestling versus formatting a show is a different animal, mm-hmm. right? 
So yeah. formatting the show is like, I don't care what the fuck happens as long as the cruiserweights are, are jumping on each other in, in, in the car crash segment here, and then this has happened here, and then something surprising happens here, and throw some backstage segments in here. If that's all he's doing is that guy, guiding hand, that's the thing that kept me from turning my dial to USA Network and checking out whatever Bret Hart was doing. Okay. Okay? That's what I think is his contribution, is that style. To which WWF responded to, right? But he didn't do that on SmackDown. That's what I'm saying. Well, SmackDown didn't exist till later. No, I'm saying this. Oh, he didn't. Part. No, 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 no. He's yeah. not going to re- reinvent the wheel, and he's also working with somebody else's. Uh, uh, you know, he's working with somebody else's. Uh, uh, you know, set of tools at this point, and doesn't have the autonomy he did in WCW. So, I mean, that's the other thing. He has to work within. The Vince McMahon and Fox now uh, framework, I guess, right? So, and that that can be a lot harder. But who knows? You 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 grew up past that, I think, Xander, right? So, no, I'm I'm born in eighty nine. Eighty nine so that would have so been my prime time. You grew but, up, okay, uh, okay. Minor confession: I didn't start watching wrestling until two thousand eight. Wow. So, and that is the part where we feel old. I have I have jumped back through the network and watched every single WWE Raw, every single WWE SmackDown, up through the Attitude Era, all the way through uh, Ruthless Aggression. Mm-hmm. But I first got into it. Actually, I was overseas, and I think I was homesick. So I started watching it. All the content was free. Yeah. And at the time, Miz was <laughs> becoming world champion as a heel. And it just, that's what... Because that's right. WWE is uh, is still carried over the uh, Armed Forces Network, right? Yep. All it their shows. Always has been the pay-per-views. Free I pay-per-views. remember them always talking about on the old WrestleManias, like starting with probably seven, right? Uh, with Desert Storm. Sergeant mm-hmm. Slayer versus Hulk Hogan, baby, for America. <laughs> uh, but, man, those were the good old days. So was Miz really what got you into it? Miz was the first wrestler who really attracted me into the product um, just because his delivery. I feel he's a really articulate, one of the best mic workers probably from 2008 till now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I like that. I like his attitude. He also, he, I was able to enjoy and laugh at him, and that was my first like real introduction to wrestling. And I'd always assumed like two guys in tights wrestling around baby oil. Mm-hmm. So he showed me a different side of it, which I really got into. And then we've mentioned him a few times. Cesaro came along and it was a match he did. I think it was on main event and he was fighting big E Langston when he was a heel. Before, oh. before New Day. <laughs> and that had to be great. Cesaro, he was on the second rope bent over while Langston was on the ground and he did a deadlift suplex to mm-hmm. him all the way back into the ring. And I just said, how like, there's no way this is not real. Oh and I just, I went back, I watched all his stuff in Chikar, all his stuff as Ring mm-hmm. of Honor, mm-hmm. and I was just, everything he did, uh, he's a very, and this is to one of his strengths, I feel, Cesaro is a really repetitive wrestler, and that he will do a certain move, considering the swing, considering Euros, he'll leave people in corners and run back and forth doing European uppercuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He does the yeah. swing for like two minutes, Yeah. Uh, and he used repetition which you would think like oh you don't want to keep doing the same move over and over again but he kind of abused it yeah and i really really actually like that and he got me hooked into the more technical side of wrestling so miz was like my big draw in form of entertainment and then cesaro was there for the actual wrestling and cesaro was always one when i saw him either here with iwc in the the, what late 2000s or in chikara king of trios 2009 uh he, he was in a big faction thing it was always he made not just because he was a big guy, but he made moves big, right? Like they would do, you know, trios competition. They would do a move where they held a guy up by his arms. The two guys, another one, kind of ran through him, which flipped him around, right? And sitting there in the ECW arena for that, like it just looked like the biggest incredible move. And it's just guy flipping and taking a bump. That's all. That's it. You know, like he didn't do a four fifty splash or anything, but because it was, you know the way that they did it and made the guy move up in the air it just it just made it look like it was like the biggest thing on the show well it's it's because you have a guy the size of drew mcintyre doing ray mysterio's move set but, <laughs> also, but also doing brock lesnar's move set right like right. like 
when Cesaro broke out the Swiss one nine, <laughs> I legitimately just was like, "Oh, okay, he can literally do anything he fucking wants, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and anything that can physically be done in a wrestling ring that man can do." Because he's fueled constantly by coffee. That's yeah. Why. I have at least ten Cesaro shirts. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> that's awesome. I would sometimes like every time it would come out, I'd buy like two. Just like I'll cut off the sleeves on one and have have this one normal. There you go. That's awesome. Uh, hey, it's that time, real quick. Hope he shows up on NXT. I know, right? I, I want to see Cesaro and Keith Lee more than life. Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? And you guys in the chat room too, please drop that in there. And I believe the move is called Ragnarok that I explained. According mm-hmm. to Alex, our, our Chikara expert out there. Good old BK. Yes. I I learned that much like Michael Bluth asking if anyone knows what a chicken looks like, I am asking everyone in the Raw and SmackDown war rooms if they know what a draft looks like because they don't. It's like, have you watched this before? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. I wasn't even excited to have Stephanie on my screen. It just, it just, like, great. Here we are. Um, Sander, what'd you learn in wrestling this week? Considering the last two SmackDown shows, you know, huge Brock Lesnar match, got to tune in. The Rock is here. Mm-hmm. This one, SmackDown draft, you got to tune in. Mm-hmm. I learned that a bright light catches your attention. Mm-hmm. But you don't ever want to stare into a bright light for a long time. You're talking about that pyro, aren't you? I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was making a very deep metaphor here, uh, analogy, if you will. Yes, uh, no, as it's... you should. But um, SmackDown. I'm interested to see how it goes because they keep pulling. Oh my gosh! Look at this big SmackDown event. Like this is the mm-hmm. first time ever. This big bright light. You get attention. Yeah. And you watch the show and you're like, oh, the draft was okay. Mm -hmm. Next week they're going to have, oh, there's a new something this Friday. Yeah. Might get my attention, but I don't want to watch the whole thing. Yeah. Next Friday I'll be like, you know what? The bright light Uh, isn't that amazing. I'm not going to keep staring into it. Next Friday, SmackDown may be preempted. Wow. Baseball. Baseball. World Series. Yeah. Oh, boy. But that's okay because as I was looking at the F. What's going to happen with that? I was looking at the F- FS1 schedule, and actually, if you look up on, on certain systems, SmackDown is played repeatedly across multiple Fox networks throughout the week now. So just for broad repetition, I think they're going to get fans at this point. Like this is, I think this is why they got so much money with they this They might thing. get people watching it. That doesn't necessarily mean they get fans of it. I don't know. Like Just like the click-through, oh, what's this random wrestling? And my God, this backstage show is an hour long. Holy crap. Oh, I also learned I feel so bad for Kofi Kingston. Oh, yeah. Because we, we just uh, we have him come out and talk about uh, uh, breast cancer like nothing happened the week before. Well, not only that, did you see what he's involved in in uh, You Saudi Be Killing Me? Oh, the uh, best tag team in the world. I can't wait to see who Shane teams yeah. with. And he's probably not even going to be wrestling. Hmm. He he! They put him front and center on the graphic, and I'm like, "This mm-hmm. man was your world champion like a week and a half ago." What what's the best tag team in the world? Story? It, it's it's just the tournament it's they announced tag, for Crown Jewel. Tag team royal match featuring every tag team that's not the office. It's a tag team battle royal. It's a turmoil match. Turmoil. So it's a gauntlet match. It's Maybe a tag it's team a team fucking match. gauntlet match. It's Eric Bischoff. <laughs> oh, it's Eric That's Bischoff and Paul fired. Heyman. <laughs> there, there it is. Uh, I'm confused. I, did, did, I guess they did have a game. So because they're still apparently running SmackDown on this channel on FS1, unless they're just running matches alongside this backstage program. I have absolutely no idea what the backstage show. Because right now I'm well, it's supposed to be a sports center ish talk show. By WWE, I thought. I thought you get the inside yeah. scoop on these kind of productions. I thought, but I don't know if they're. I don't know how you talk about all things WWE for an hour with only Renee and Booker. Okay, Booker let's see. Bear, Booker could barely talk about Raw when he was commentating it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's the that's the top notch programming they got over there. God, how Former many days too? I was thinking about this because you know between all the uh, reality programming and stuff, just it's amazing how many separate programs WWE does now. Right, like if it's not you know we talked about this a little before, like you know WWE's a media company, right? They have characters, different platforms, like multi-platform media company, you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, like, you know, Canada with Disney or something. Without the only thing they're missing is the damn theme park, and they closed that thing, that one store with the store, the roller coaster up in Niagara Falls uh, years ago. So <laughs> never rode it. I was, I was, I'm not trusting. I'm not trusting a, a a ride on top of a building in Niagara Falls. Have you seen some of those haunted houses up there? They are scary. But I went. It was fun. You went on it. It was fun. I don't trust it. I would have gone on the ride, but the ride wasn't there when I went to Niagara Falls. No. Anyways, that's what I learned. Holy, holy media company. I'm astonished at that. We may not like all the programming that happens on there. You know, much like you may not uh, respect all the programming that happens on the Disney Channel. Uh, but it's got a mass appeal. It makes them money. And you're going to see more of it. And Sork, one more thing. I also learned that if you haven't seen Rookie of the Year... <laughs> Here we go. Next month, mm -hmm. you have no fucking excuse mm -hmm. because it's going to be available on launch on Disney Plus. Oh. You no, know your ass is getting Disney Plus. That's or right. you know someone who's going to get it and you're going to steal their login. That's right. Is that when he breaks his arm and it comes back stronger? Yes. Is that, yeah. Uh, good one. We had the Rookie of the Year on the couch where you're sitting a couple months ago. Really? Yes. I started wrestling too late. Okay. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite. That San Maybe Sandlot I like a little bit better than uh -huh. Rookie of the Year. But oh, I accept that. Okay. I That's I fine. You may have fighting words with Chachi, but um, yeah. It, it depends on my mood, honestly, which which one I like better. Well, how about this? Cars has a good... What if, the, what if this uh, new show is pretty much talking smack? It's not. I know it's not, but man, it that would be great. Car said they should have just brought back Talking Smack, yes. which is absolutely correct. Uh, Car says he learned that he doesn't know how a draft works either, <laughs> and he also <laughs> learned that they aren't burying the fiend; uh, they're burning the whole thing down. Yep, and and Seth Rollins will be playing the part of Randy Orton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good old BDK. That's BDK was the uh, team that. I, I hope we get maggots projected onto the field oh, at Halloween Panic. I just feel like there's they gotta be real careful with that in Saudi Arabia. I feel like you can really overstep a boundary with that character real easy just by I, being there. there. By the way, um last time we saw him on SmackDown, mm -hmm. can we not show the shot where you see the guys that are flashing the lights? It's <laughs> 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 like come on production. Come on. Hey, at least it wasn't two assholes with their cell phones just going. <laughs> no, that was us at RWA a few weeks ago. Anyways, guys, thank you so much again. Uh, please go check out the currently wrestling uh, article over on PittsburghWrestling.com or if you're in the Pittsburgh area, I believe it's going to be in the print edition as well. I haven't picked up my copy yet to check it out, uh, but that will be ongoing, I believe, unless they didn't get a good reaction the first week. But um, And also check out everything going on. Ringing Wrestling or Lance, uh Rumble on Route 30. You're going to see this guy, Xander Gabriel. It's for a good cause up it there. I believe the it's for, department, the, for the police department of... Uh, Huntington? I think it's Huntington Heights. North, uh, Huntington Heights. North Huntington-ish in the area. One of the police departments up there. They're doing great things, of course. That, that one for the uh, North Huntington Fire Department was... Vi had a lot going on i know i know talking with a fun show yeah I, I, talking with a promoter that's been here for years and he said that's that's the greatest pre-sales he's seen for a wrestling event uh that he's worked and that's that's great so go check that out once again where can people find you xander find me on facebook as xander gabriel that's with a z as in zulu and xylophone not you an x as in triple x find me on instagram xander underscore gabriel and twitter breaker of gains all one word with an s as well as upcoming shows november 9th 2pw and the iwc network which is available on iwc.com uh november 2nd winner takes all excellent mad mike 483 on the tweets and youtube.com slash poppy hashtag poppy club if you want to go with that uh we'll see you guys and of course uh, we will be here live on DWrestling.us Facebook tomorrow night with Peyton Graham, the Destroyer, will be joining us. 
Um, and I will ask him what it's like to get punched in the face by MV Young. Uh, amongst other uh, hot button issues, I suppose. Uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time. And Mayhem. Thank you, producer Missy. Thank you, producer Missy. I don't think she's been listening tonight. Uh, Mayhem out. Wait, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.